Simple lick for you. Right. Couldn't get much simpler than that. Watch it. with apologies to Doc Watson and all the greats. It's just Uncle Larry saying hello on a Friday night. TGIF, friends. Um, I just put the boys to bed. There's nothing more special than that. You know, um, I was just saying to the Cliffs boys, the Cliffs, you know, the, remember that band that I produced uh, from parts of Indiana, uh, those young lads, they're all in their early 20s. I was just saying to them on a text thread, we've had this ongoing text thread for ages. I sent them a picture of my boys on the couch watching TV and I said, snuggling on the couch at the end of a long day with my sweet boys is, there's nothing better in life. And I, I said to those guys, can't wait till one day down the road you guys feel that feeling. It is the best thing. There is no, there's no thing in life that can touch it. No career accomplishments, no money, no food, no drug and booze combination that can touch that feeling. Queuing up an old sentimental movie with your kids and just snuggling up on the couch and watching it. It's the best thing in the world. Um, it took me a long time to figure that out. I didn't have my first kid till I was 44. I bet you some of you dudes out there are in the same boat. You're in your late 30s thinking, man, I don't even know if I want a kid, you know? 
Trust me, you want one. Um, I didn't, I was so upset when I found out my dear beloved ex-wife was pregnant. I, I, I had no idea that I was gonna, that I wanted to be a dad or that I would be a good dad. None of that stuff. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sell this guitar, friends. I've got, I love this guitar and I, I play it all the time, but I've got two guitars that are very similar. I've got this and I've got that 64 J50. And they're both the same guitar, really. They both have this, you know, the, the uh, rock and roll saddle. This is a 63 Southern Jumbo. You can hear how nice it is. It plays amazing, it sounds amazing. I just don't need two of these guitars. I think I, I, think I like the J50 a little bit better. So I'm gonna let this one go. And somebody out there is just gonna be your favorite guitar. I, I think I got 5,500 bucks in this guitar. 5,500, it's yours, plus shipping. Plays like an electric. My uh, whole tone bluegrass run. It's in tune. Just let me know. I don't really need it. I don't want to, I don't really want to sell it, but I don't need it. I could use the money for something else. Um, I did just buy an old Rickenbacker. It's not here yet, but I bought an old 360. I've had a mess of them in my life. But I don't have a Rickenbacker right now. And I just thought, man, I need one for the occasional overdub because there is a sound that they have. They're not the greatest playing guitars in the world, but they do have a sound if you can ever get them in tune, because that's another problem. They're like Gretsch's, they're hard to tune. Um, I got an old Marshall too. Can you see it over there? See that? It's a white back panel, 66 Super PA head that I just got recently. I haven't even turned it on yet. Um, I just bought it from a friend of mine, Plexi. Pretty rare model. Looking, looking forward to trying that out. Um, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, thanks for all the kind words about the recent videos I put up, friends. Yeah, I really enjoyed seeing a lot of you last night at the Guthrie gig at... Um, the underdog. It was quite an evening. Um, I had worked all day and I was a little crispy. Well, I finished that project that I'm producing for that comedian girl, Jamie French, who's actually a fantastic singer. Um, man, she really impressed me. She's got like 900,000 followers as, as a comedian on YouTube, but the girl can flat out sing. I mean, her pitch is like a laser. Mm. I told her that today. I mean, she was pretty self-conscious about her singing. And I was like, honey, I've worked with some of the greatest singers that ever walked on this planet. And, and she's as good as any of them as far as, like, her ability to nail a part. And, man, her pitch is amazing. You don't, you don't find that every day, friends. A lot of people out there that have a kind of a cool voice, but you got to really work with them to get everything, you know, in the realms of acceptability. She's a one-take singer. You don't see that every day. Um, but yeah, the gig was so much fun last night. So many sweetheart people there. I met uh, all kind of sweet people from all over the world at that gig. The place is very small, but there was a lot of people there. It was a little hot in there, a little muggy, but we had a good time. Um, 
play a few tunes. Judd was there, Uncle Nick. Jack, Jack Roosh was playing. That boy's got some tone. He's got a good tone. He's got good sound in hands. Um, Rob McNally was in there doing his thing. Guthrie was raging, as always. And you saw that little clip I put up last night. That was the tip of the iceberg, man. I mean, he was just fucking... He's like 2024 Hank Garland. You know, that's how I think of him. He's got... He's the closest we're ever going to get in this modern day and age to, like, having Hank Garland or Jimmy Bryant around. That's a weird one. I met a sweet guy from um, Australia who was there last night. He kind of looked like Robert Plant. Long hair, beard. Um, he was with this very sweet girl from Argentina, from Buenos Aires. And this guy's name was Adam. And he was very kind and sweet. And he was like, I love you, Uncle Larry. You changed my life, man. I watched you all through COVID. And poor guy, he doesn't get to the States much but he had a locker full of gear that all got stolen and um i guess they stole 50 grand worth of shit from him and he was pretty heartbroken about it and uh, uh he hadn't been in that locker in a long time and he has no idea when the stuff got stolen so there was might have been an inside job he said you know there was some some tampering there from the the storage company and uh, that's kind of sad. Um, he was pretty heartbroken about it. And I said, I said, well, hey, man, you know, you could have lost, you know, 1.5 million in a divorce. You know, I've heard that happens to certain people. I mean, nobody I know. But I've heard that happens. I'm just kidding, friends. I'm just kidding. Uh, there are no mistakes in this life. Uh, everything happens for a reason, as we all know. You know, I worked with Brandon Hood all day today, my my dear friend, uh, and I got to see Gordon Moat, and Chris McHugh, and Mark Hill, and uh, a lot of really great musicians. And um, I just was thinking to myself while we were in there playing, I was thinking, man, what a, what a cool thing. The fact that, you know, we live in this town where, where people still get together in rooms and play music live together and record it. I mean, I know for a fact that in a not very long from now future, we're going to be looking back on this and going, wow, we were the last city that even did that. Um, it's, it'll get to the point where it's too expensive and that will be phased out. Everything cool in this life gets phased out eventually. Um, uh, but, I mean, I, I think about it every day, and I'm enjoying every second of it. Um, you know, what a cool thing to be able to drive to work, and put on some headphones and jam with, with a bunch of incredible musicians and get paid. I mean, it's like a dream. I never take it for granted. I used to take it for granted. I used to take it really for granted. Back when I was miserable, before I retired and regained the ability to enjoy the shit, which I desperately needed um, to gain some perspective. But I've got 
all the perspective a man could ever have now at age 55. I'm, you need some perspective. I got some extra that I can give you. Um, we're all lucky to be here, friends. It's not, it's not hard to understand that life is all about appreciating and trying to make the best of each day. Don't worry about trying to be happy or, you know, successful or any of that shit. None of that shit matters. Just try to soak everything you can out of every minute, you know, because um, it's very fleeting. Um, and it can, anything can happen at any minute. You could stroke out, you could... You could have a terrible car accident. Well, you know, there's so many fucking things that could take you down. But when you think about the fact that another day went by when none of that terrible shit happens, it's pretty energizing. You know, maybe tomorrow will be the same way. And uh, I like I like kind of being in that mindset. It might sound negative to some, or sort of weird to some people, but I I, I use that sort of negative reinforcement I think I've always used that to sort of help me figure out what's right and um, make me appreciate what's what's like a really a bunch of really bad days will make you really appreciate a good day right so I know you guys already know all this shit and I'm not trying to act like some deep wise prophet here this is not fucking brain science but, man, a lot of people seem to lose sight of that, you know? I mean, hell, I have in the past. And I also have noticed that 99% of the time when someone fucks with you and they lash out and they say some pretty, pretty aggressive shit, or not even to you, if they say it to anyone around you, it's just... 99% of the time, it's just total insecurity that drives it. People get upset because something that's going on reminds them of some weakness that they have. And they lash out. I see it all the time at sessions. I see people trying to make up for some weaknesses that they have and that they're, they don't want anybody to know about. And they lash out and they... You know, they say things they shouldn't say. I mean, it, we all do it. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to act like I don't do it. I do it, too. I'm insecure about a lot of things. I'm getting better. Um, you know, think, moments like last night. Like, like I didn't particularly want to drag my ass out of the house to go down there last night. You know, it's kind of a long drive from where I live and and all that. But once you get there... And you realize it is just a celebration of life, man. It's a fucking cool thing. You know, all those sweet people came all that way to see your you and your pitiful guitar play a little bit. That's that's pretty cool, right? I realize I'm not playing at Madison Square Garden and shit like that. And uh, But man, in its own way, it's pretty fucking cool. And I think we all have that going on, you know? Whatever your gig is, you know, it's pretty cool that we can make money and have a little free time in this life from just playing our instruments. That's pretty amazing. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about all this. Probably because I'm a little buzzed up and probably because I just put my kids to bed and I'm all sentimental and all that. But these are the thoughts that rattle around in my head a lot, you know, even if I don't say it. That's what I'm thinking about, usually. What about a guitar lick I could show you? Um, I was listening to uh, Beatles a lot today. I was listening to um, some outtakes from later albums. Uh, remember, um, you know my name. Look up my number. song, the goofball song the Beatles wrote, where they just say the same thing over and over. It's fucking amazing. You know my name, look up my number. That was on the B side of the Let It Be single, 45. 
for those who keep the score at home. Here's a cool lick, check this out. Last thing I'm going to tell you, and then I'm going to bed. Marshall was in his room just blasting away on some rock and roll. He likes to play that heavy rock and roll shit. And he's getting really good at it. And uh, every once in a while, I'll pop in there and show him a lick, and he takes off. He was in there blazing with his fuzz pedal today. And I, and I, I walked in and said, hey, show, let me show you something. Turn that fuzz pedal off. No, turn the tone control on the guitar down. And I played him. I said, I want to see you play this song. And it's a song he's heard many times, but I... I never taught it to him. I taught him. So I just said, look, try to get this chill sound using the side of the pick. Try to make it sound like this. You loosen your wrists, you know, really good. Worked on that. We played along with the record, and he got it. After a while, he's playing. I always said, "Don't worry about the licks, all the lead stuff. Just learn his rhythm part first. And he got it. I feel like that <laughs> is a good example of a song that's good to learn when you're first starting guitar. You know, I remember when I was eight years old in 1977, my brother brought that record home from the record store. My oldest brother said, listen to this, man. You know, I was blown away by it. I still am. Sultan's a Swing by the Dire Straits. You might have heard it. Good thing to teach a kid, you know, learning those chords, how to those bar those chords and how to get that rhythm going. Relentlessly, without stop and, and learn the feel. Forget all the, about the wheelie wheelies, but just learn the rhythm part. And try to make it feel like that. His brother played that, David Knopfler. All right, friends, get some sleep. I'm gonna get, get some sleep. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great weekend. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.